Hello and welcome to the latest episode of The Boardmasters with me, Chris Mullins, and tonight I am finally, finally going to unbox Return to Dark Tower, which if you've followed the channel at all over the last couple of years, you will know the campaign for Dark Tower is what alerted me to what modern board gaming was all about. Uh, three years ago at this point, literally my board game collection consisted of XCOM, Lord of the Rings Living Card Game and Marvel Legendary, purely because of the licenses. And three years later, I have got a Kallax that fills the ring. <laughs> so it definitely opened my eyes and got me far too addicted, really. Um, so why is it taking me so long to open? I think part of me sort of lied to myself for the past X number of months because uh, you know, it, the UK was pretty much the last region to get the copies of the game, and so I think I said to myself, oh, well, loads of unboxings have already been done all around the world, there's no point in me doing one, and just left it on the shelf for much longer than I thought as well, just before coming, or coming to film this, I had a look to see when it was delivered, expecting it to have been September, October time, and it turns out I actually got this back in May, it's been almost like 10 months, <laughs> like two weeks short of 10 months that this has been sat on my shelf. Even when it's stored, I have it behind the sort of the roll of play mats that I've got dangling down the Calyx, uh, which is absurd really. And I sort of asked myself, why, why have I held off for so long? And I think the nerves are really there in that this game is so significant in my sort of short board gaming life that what happens if I open it and just feel a bit meh? What if we get it to the table and I don't like it? And to be honest, that's terrified me. Kind of the same with the shivers. That's why the shivers is still in shrink wrap because again, I've been so excited for that. But I think it's time to do it. Uh, as you may have noticed, the board games are not behind me this evening. I have switched to the other side of the room to try and mitigate some of the glare I get from the from the light. So hopefully that will be a bit better. Uh, but here we got the back of the book. Are you ready to take on the tower? And, you know, this game, the table presence, especially with the miniatures, which we're going to have a look at, the table presence of this is second to none and again if you follow the channel at all you will know I am very very shallow when it comes to table presence and the like. Uh, I mean before I dive into the box we've got the, this stunning play mat out and already the table presence has been dialed up to 11. Uh, I have to keep the, the top on the table for this one because it's not going to fit in the recess. It's that that big a playmat, which is slightly absurd. I think Burn Cycle is probably the only other one that is similar in that regard. And Burn Cycle is actually another one I need to unbox. And I think that's another one. Again, just nerves because they've got. The, I spent far too much on those brass figs, and if they come out looking crap, I'm going to be kicking myself. But let's dive in to return to Dark Tower. Again, like I said, hopefully the glare isn't too bad. Uh, so we've got these tokens. I'm not going to dive into the tokens much because I've got these slightly fancier ones we can have a look at. This card piece is included only for transit and can be recycled after receipt. Your game board is stowed under the bottom insert for transit and should be er inserted in place of the card when stored back in the box. That's pretty cool. I, don't, I think that's the first time... I've seen something like that and it's really, really appreciated. I'll keep hold of that bit just because that's not labelled. I'm just going to put that to the side a moment because my eyes have instantly fallen on this incredible piece of kit. I mean, that is, that, that is cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is very, very, very cool indeed. Uh, and obviously when you're playing, it's going to be lighting up, it's going to be spinning, you're going to be putting skulls in the top that are going to be falling out. You have these 
uh, doors that open, I think. I might be wrong, or well, they probably open. Oh yeah, you lift them up and they sort of uncover symbols that are very bad news for you, from what I understand. That is an incredible piece of kit. Obviously, if you don't know anything about the game, you do need an app to play it because the app uh, communicates with the tower and controls everything along those lines. So if you're not into app-driven games at all, this probably isn't going to be one for you. Uh, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Destinies is still one of my favourite games, and that is almost entirely app-driven. Let's see if we can get hold of this board a minute. Which isn't going to get much time on the table, I guess, because we've got the play mat instead. Let's go that way. Let's move that out of the way. Trying to do it one-handed is not working. What's this? Okay, is that just a that come loose off the back? There's my little opening knife. Always get nervous opening anything like this, especially with... Thankfully that knife is incredibly blunt, so it can't really do any damage. I mean, it struggles to get through the cellophane enough as it is. But let's have a look at this board. Again, so obviously the board is just a smaller version of the playmat. It still looks absolutely fantastic. Obviously the colours aren't quite as pronounced. I, I really like the great extra pop you get from the colours on the playmat. And then the, the tower, the titular tower is going to stand in the middle of that. And that is already dominating the landscape of everything around it. We've got our little box with some miniatures. Oh, it's a sellotaped one. They always trick me with these. You always get some, most of them aren't sellotaped and then whenever you get one it uh, throws you out completely. So these are, are going to be the, your player heroes and you know they have a much more detail than I really expected on them. They look excellent. Really like the look of those. I do have the Alliances expansion. I probably won't crack into that at all in this video because again it's just going to be a couple of hero minis and then predominantly cards I think. And that's not the most interesting to show. I tried to skip over the cards now because again, by the time I actually get the card pack open, they're not worth looking at. There we go. So we got these skulls that I mentioned earlier. So I'll probably break it by putting these in without. There we go. So you put your skull in and they either stay behind doors or they fall out into your kingdom. And again, the detail on those is really good. I'll try and get some close-ups of those because they're too small really to show on there. But I do like those a lot. And then these are going to be your little sort of buildings that you establish in your, in your region. Because they have these rivers on the board here that are the borders between each region. So ideally you've got four players. Which is another reason why it's taken so long to get to the table because I don't want to play this game with less than four. And for illnesses and things, it's been a nightmare trying to get four of us together. So as I said, I'm going to skip over the, the cards. Have a look at some of these resources, the Coffers expansion as they called it. Because I do love a fancy little coin and thing. And that has a very satisfying sound already. And they're very different to any sort of other metal coins that I've have before. Well, they're not metal, they're sort of resin, I think. But they have a very, very satisfying sound to them. And really interesting, bright, colourful designs, which I really like as well. Again, very different to anything else I've got. And I think this might be one of the only times I have ever looked at sleeves in an unboxing before. Other than maybe Dead Reckoning, where obviously a huge chunk of the gameplay is dependent on the sleeves. Whereas these are just, just sleeves. But they are very, very attractive in terms of the ones with the artwork. So I'll go for the bigger ones because hopefully that will be a bit more clear. But 
obviously there you you've got your dark tower in the middle with all the assorted weaponry and so like the corpses of those who have attempted to scale the tower before and have failed and met a grisly end and i just think those on all the cards are just going to look spectacular i'm making an awful lot of mess let's get this big old box back up so we've got the dark horde expansion i might just move the tower aside so this is your miniatures box as you can see there's quite a collection there so let's dive in on this again i had to get this because the whole attraction of this game for me originally very shallow i'll admit because i didn't have the original i don't have the nostalgia or anything for the the game that was out decades ago and you know i backed this as much for the toy element as for the board game element so i had to get as many toys as i possibly could and if you want to maximize the table presence of something why did i knock over my axe man sorry mr barbarian you have if you want to maximize your table presence you've got to get some stunning minis and i love it absolutely love it when a miniatures box has got a map telling you where the minis go because some games it is an absolute nightmare trying to remember which slot each mini came out of i think core space was one that was a real struggle and they didn't have too many minis of course it's going to be one that sellotape down isn't it yeah So what have we got in here then? We've got some shadow walls. Very, very nice. What are these spine fiends? Oh wow, I love the look of those. Like manticore style with a sort of scorpion tail. Again, get some close-ups of this over the top of this footage so you can see more of what's going on. We've got some like skeleton priests. I'm not quite sure what they are e lemure like dr strange as a skeleton but those are obviously your standard enemies that are going to be coming out and chasing you around the board and harassing you before you get to the big bads and forgive me for rushing but i just want to dive in on some of these big bads Let's just grab a couple to begin with. I mean, look at these. That dragon is absolutely stunning. Oh, I'll only grab a handful and I managed to grab two of the same. <laughs> Typical. Uh, but we got the, uh, the Titan. And you know, if, once you've got one of these with a assortment of little ones charging around which are going to come out in much greater numbers you've got your heroes you've got your tower in the middle i mean already you can see the table presence of this is going to be excellent you get some of these buildings on there as well i am glad <laughs> i finally bit the bullet and opened this game overcame my fears and cannot wait to get it to the table now cannot wait to get some gameplay on the channel to be honest uh, hopefully that will be happening sooner rather than later so thank you very much for watching look after yourself stay safe and have a good one bye bye now